Hey, you guys, it's Stella Grisant going live. Okay, now I just realized I meant to share this on the Whoopa page. We're still getting the hang of all this technology <laughs> situation, but um, do check out my Whoopa page because that is where I will be doing this next week. <laughs> um, and it is going to be at Whoopa. So if you go to my Whoopa page and you like it, it will show up on your feed and I will be doing it there moving forward. So the idea is that I'll be doing one of these, we're calling them Work Happier Weekly. And uh, this will be about 10 to 15 minutes where we talk about something that may be holding you back at work or how to just be bigger and better and more alive at work. And uh, we'll keep it we'll keep it kind of short. And I fully, hey Lydia, I fully, fully encourage you guys to participate, share. And if you want um, to keep it anonymous, because I totally get some of this stuff may be sensitive, you can just um, message me and I'll, I'll try to read those messages while I'm on here, if that's possible. Hey, Eric, long time. Okay, cool. So today, we're going to be talking about um, how to let go of a grudge. So, you know, this could be a grudge that is very mild. So maybe a coworker of yours always runs a little bit late and it irks you, um, or maybe your significant other leaves socks around everywhere, or it could be bigger. Maybe it could be from a betrayal you experienced or some real pain that someone um, caused you. So let's see, let's see where this goes, okay? <laughs> um, so the first thing when you have a grudge is you want to acknowledge your feelings. And this sounds really obvious, but what I have found in my own experience is sometimes a grudge begins to grow without me consciously realizing it because I'm stuffing my feelings down. I don't want to feel angry or I don't feel like I should feel angry or I don't want to face the disappointment of something not working out the way I thought it would. And so sometimes that grudge is uh, is developing, is growing inside of you, and uh, you're not even aware of it. But it you start to become aware of it when you're short with the other person. Maybe you're mean to them. Maybe there's some passive aggressive stuff going on. And so that means, hey, I got to look at this. And so I encourage you, step one, hey, Anya, hey, hey, Angel. Um, I encourage you guys, first and foremost, to just kind of take a moment and be like, what, what's going on for me here? How am I feeling? Like, can I name the feeling? There was actually research done with patients who were undergoing MRI examinations. Um, and what they did is they had a group of patients kind of go in and go through the procedure and not say a word before they going in. And then they had another patients where they would ask them, how are you feeling going into the uh, procedure? And the people who were able to express their feelings, saying that they were feeling nervous or scared, were actually able to let go of that emotion faster. So articulating the emotion will help you. So label the emotion, if you can, that is coming up for you around this grudge. So disappointment, anger, resentment, uh, jealousy, whatever it is. So try to get in touch with that. And I know that's not always comfortable, um, but that's the work that has to be done. And then maybe you're fully in touch with your anger. So that might be very easy for you to do. Um, the, the next thing you want to do is really ask yourself, am I willing to let go? And again, another super obvious one, right? But a lot of times you might find that there's resistance to letting go because part of you wants that other person to feel some sort of punishment, or you may want the other person to be upset, or you may want the other person to feel really sorry and they don't feel sorry. So 
The question is, are you willing to shift your stance in this scenario? Are you willing to let go? And that's a real serious question to ask yourself because, hey, Luanya, uh, holding on to a grudge is not about the other person. It's actually about you. And when you hold on to a grudge, you are causing yourself stress and pain. That is your responsibility to tend to your own thoughts and your own heart. And by holding on to this, that is inflicting more harm to you than to anyone else. But there's a certain readiness that has to come with letting go of a grudge. And so you just want to check in. Maybe today's not the day. It might take some more time. It may take your sitting with that emotion a little bit more. There's no perfect science to this. This may be a little messy. <laughs> so, hey, Karen. So what I would recommend is after you sit with the emotion, you label the emotion, you want to ask yourself, am I willing to let this go? And if the answer is yes, so we're going to go down two paths, yes and no. So if the answer is yes, there's a few things you can do to help you in releasing the grudge. One thing you might want to do is ask the question, how, how can I look at this differently? How can I look at this differently? That is my favorite, that is one of my favorite questions. And so whenever I find myself upset with someone or feeling really stuck or something's just, there's like resistance, I ask myself, how can I look at this differently? And so when you're willing to let go and you're willing to look at this differently, then you might be even able to take a few steps towards seeing that person's experience and being in their own shoes. So how might you consider what's going on for them? So let's say there's, I'm making this up on the spot. I should have probably prepared a better example, but let's just say someone at work is always uh, running late and they're never turning in their end of the work on time. And that means you're always running late because you have to go nag them to get, to give you the information so that you can then do your job. Hey, Emily. So what do you need to do? So you might want to, if you're willing to let go of the grudge, if you're willing to see it differently, you might want to say, okay, what's going on for this other person and try to be in their shoes. Are they, and then maybe what you might start to notice is that oh, uh, they seem really haggard lately and really tired. Maybe there's something going on in their personal life. Or you might notice that they're actually working on a lot of other assignments that you're not a part of. And so maybe they're being overwhelmed and there's a lot that's pulling at them. Uh, or maybe you have no idea, but you, what you could do is hold the space for, maybe there's something going on for them that I just don't know. So I, again, that's another point for you to pause and just sit and consider. There's a lot of pausing in this process of letting go. The last that, you know, the, I, there's no like direct line. I don't think there's no like perfect, graceful, one track way to like letting go of something that's really gripping your heart. But what I would recommend no matter what is to try to avoid reacting from that angry hurt place. And so I did a few Facebook lives last week on how to master difficult conversations. And so if that sounds like, oh, thanks, Emily. So if that sounds like something that if you do want to have a conversation with this person because you need to understand more, then that's really great. Um, watch the, the other Facebook lives. They're actually on my page at Stella Grisan. I think they're also on my WUPA page. So there's a part one and a part two. And review those. They're really quick before you go and talk to this person. Because the number one thing when you go into a difficult conversation, especially one where you're already feeling this grudge, is you 
in order to really experience more understanding, understand why they're not pulling their weight, understand why they're always running late, whatever it is. Why is he always leaving the socks all over the floor? Why doesn't he hear me that that really bothers me? Whatever it is. Um, in order for them to hear you and to really open up, they're going to need to feel safe. And if your energy is really prickly and angry or whatever it is that you're feeling, they're gonna, that's going to transmit because emotions are contagious and they might not feel safe enough to actually give you the understanding you need. So watch those other two um, module or Facebook Lives. Uh, I'm going to type it in here, how to master difficult conversations part one and two, if that's something that you want to do. And that's on my Facebook Live. I did that if, like last week. So um, so we're still going down the track that you're willing to let it go. You're willing to kind of try to see this from a different perspective. You're willing to try to understand what's going on for them, really getting into their shoes. And, and you know, one of my clients once, her, uh, her boss was – extremely rude to her consistently. And she was complaining to me about him and how his, his consistent rudeness was uncalled for. And I asked her, well, maybe there's something going on. Maybe this has nothing to do with you. And lo and behold, the following week, she learned that his wife was suffering from breast cancer. So you just never know what's going on in another person's life. And whenever someone cuts me off in traffic, the story I start to tell myself is like, maybe, uh, maybe there's someone in the hospital and they're rushing to go, um, to go into labor or whatever it is, even though I'm really pissed off at that person and all I want to do is like give them the finger. So we never really know what's going on in other people's lives. And so it's really worth your, it's just, this is for you. Like that person who cut me off, they're never going to see me. They're not going to, it, it doesn't matter how I react. But what matters is how long am I going to stay angry and let that tick me off? So being willing to see this from another perspective, just holding the possibility that you can't, you don't know everything and that this may not even be about you, that creates more expansiveness and ease to allow for things to start to shift in your heart when it comes to your relationship with this other person. So what else did I want to say? Ah, the other thing, so that was like, yes, I am willing to let this go. I am willing to see this differently. If in your heart you're like, no way, I am pissed off at this person. I am not ready. That's totally cool. Um, but if you know that this is causing you angst and you just don't want to feel that anymore. What I would recommend is a loving kindness meditation. If you've never heard of a loving kindness meditation, it's a Buddhist practice. It's not a religious practice, but it's basically like you're wishing someone well. And that may feel like the last thing you could possibly do for the person who is causing you this angst. So what I would do is download the app Calm, it's a great app, Calm. I just typed it in there. And they have, uh, ooh, I, I just realized I can pin things. Great. So, hey, Lisa. So if you download the, the app Calm, it has tons of great meditations for free. And one of them is called Loving Kindness. And if you really are tired of holding on to all this, this mental load of whatever's going on with you with this person, I would strongly consider doing a loving kindness meditation for 30 days, wishing this person well, uh, and see what happens. And you may not even have to talk to this person because two things will probably happen. One, you'll either realize this is no longer an issue for me, so I don't even have to talk to them. Or two, something may transform in your relationship with them. You may notice something shift. Uh, so I would 
definitely give that a go. It is quite miraculous what happens when you're willing to really send someone good wishes. May they be healthy, may they be happy, may they be safe, right? Because at the end of the day, yes, this is about forgiveness, but it's not forgiveness from the perspective of, I am holier than thou. I'm a better human being than you. Because if you think that's true, you are wildly mistaken because we all are messed up in our own special way, right? <laughs> we've all done stuff that just makes us feel really embarrassed or we've all made other people feel um, bad. So when you forgive, this isn't about you uh, this isn't about you being holier than thou and doing them a favor by letting it go. This is about you reckoning with, we're all human here and we all make mistakes. And I know that my holding on to this isn't serving anyone. And so I recognize that you are bigger than your actions. And that's, that's the holy grail. If we can come from that place, sometimes it just takes a little bit of work. So be patient but most importantly, be willing. Be willing to see it differently. Be willing to see it to see it differently, and be willing to let it go. And that willingness will do. That will get you like eighty five percent of the way there. Any questions, you guys? I am so loving seeing everyone on. Hey, Dina. Um, oh, Emily has a question. Yay! Go ahead, Emily. Hey, Shania. Yeah, go ahead and write your question and I'll like kind of like chat until I see it because I don't see it yet. Um, and if anybody else has a question, like go ahead and write it down um, and I will try to um, answer it. And then my final thought around when it comes to working through this stuff. So you're in there, you're trying to walk in their shoes, you're trying, you're willing to see things differently. What you also may want to take on is like, what's my responsibility here? What do I, how did I contribute to any of this? Even if my contribution was just staying quiet or maybe not giving this person all the information they needed, but just really reckoning with what is my role in this? And guess what? You probably have some role, even if it's just like one to two percent. But owning that is going to be, I think, really helpful in this process. So, hey, Emily, I don't see your question. Okay. Um, well, while we're waiting for Emily's question, do you guys have any other questions or any other thoughts? Does this make sense? Does it sound ridiculous? Do you totally disagree? Because I have not really ever talked about this topic in a public forum, so um, I'm really curious how it's landing. Does it make sense? Does it, what do you think? Oh, I see Emily's question is coming in, in, in bits. Okay, what if you, I see that, Emily. Okay, so while Emily types that out, I want to do a little survey with you guys who are actually on the call. Um, I'm thinking of doing this Facebook Live at 8.30 every Wednesday at night, Eastern time. Is that a good time or should I try to do it like late afternoon um, on Wednesday? So let me know that. Okay, Emily's question has come in. What if you work with a person, serve all the patients required, over X months and still the person doesn't come along. Oh man, I don't think I'm getting this in like a feet, like in order correctly, Emily. I'm sorry. How do you address? Hmm. Okay. Dina saying evening. Got it. Okay. That's what I'm thinking. Evening. Okay, so Emily, I think what you're saying is like you've really tried to be patient with this person and you've worked with them for several months and something's not coming along. Is that is that what you're saying? I might be missing a piece of your question because it looks like it's like just coming in in lines. Oh, yes. 
Okay, perfect. Okay, good. Okay, so let's say you've been, you've been, it sounds like you've been trying to be really patient with this person you've worked with for six months. And what are they doing wrong, Emily? Like what, or what, what's bothering you? Can you share? Or it might be too private. Okay. So here's the thing. It sounds like they've been doing something for six months that you have found annoying or inappropriate or something's like not sat well with you for six months. And that's a really long time to wait. And while I totally appreciate your patience, I think what would have been great like five months ago is to be like, hey, I noticed that, um, I noticed that this is going on would you consider doing it this way? Or can we think about a new way of doing it? Okay. Oh, I see. So the person isn't understanding information. So what I would say even earlier, so if you notice they're not getting, you know, getting it, maybe they're not getting the process or they're not getting how to uh, do something. I always try to kind of do it earlier rather than later because at six months, you're really annoyed. And what's happened is over the past six months, every day that this person doesn't quote unquote get it, you're now judging them. You're thinking, oh my God. I mean, I don't know. I'm putting words in like, this is how I would feel. I'd be like, oh, like this person doesn't get it. Are they not smart enough? You know, like what's really going on? Maybe they're not right for this role. So I would start to I'm not saying this is what I would do, but like these thoughts do cross my mind. So, and the more you sit in that judgment and irritability, the less this person will feel it. Like even if you're not saying anything, if you're, even if you're being perfectly nice, if you're thinking these thoughts in your head, that person is, gar is starting to probably feel the tension. And if they don't quote unquote get it, they're also really frustrated. So I would just start with something like, hey, like I'm noticing that even though we agree to doing things this way, or even though this is this was explained to you, I'm noticing that um, you're, you're doing it this way. Can you tell me um, wh why that might be the case? Just help me understand what's going on. Or are you not understanding um, something? Yes. So you don't want to sit in judgment. And the more you sit there and not acknowledge this directly with this person, you're going to start to, it's going to be really challenging for you not to be judgy, right? So if you could just get into, you know, that good night kind zone and curious, like being curious and kind, like what is going on for this person? How can I look at it from their perspective? Maybe they were trained to do this totally differently and just get curious and, and just you know, have a meeting, have a coffee and be like, hey, it's been six months. How are you finding things? Here's one thing I noticed that you're doing really well. And then here's something that I'm noticed, like it, we keep getting stalled around this particular area. Does that, does that help? Cool. Um, anybody else? Anybody else want to share an example? All right. Yay. All right. I th this was fun. I felt like this was like a fun, good conversation. We could have another one. Also, um, let me know if you have any ideas for topics that you'd like me to address. We'll be doing this Wednesdays at 8.30 p.m. And if you prefer another time, also let me know. We'll be doing it before, like through like Christmas time. And then we'll see what happens next. So this is a total experiment. Um, hey, Brittany. Okay. Brittany's asking, how do you master difficult conversations in a group atmosphere? Meaning multiple people weighing in on good ideas or bad. Ooh, that's a really good question. Well, I think what would be really helpful in those circumstances is what you do before you start the conversation. So for example, when you're engaging in a brainstorm or a meeting, hey, Amy, you might want to say, so here's what we're going to cover today and here's how we're going to do it and maybe set up some 
rules for how you want to have the brainstorm. And in many cases, if you're brainstorming ideas, there's no, you, you could have a rule, there's no good or bad. And, or if there's an idea that's a good idea, but not relevant to what we're talking about, you could have like a parking lot um, section. Um, so it depends on what your objectives are. And so um, I would need to know a little bit more. Do do you have any? Do you want to give me any more context? But I would certainly, you know, whenever you have a group dynamic, it's always if 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 your values aren't clear as an organization or as a team, then you what you want to at least do in the upfront is just talk about, hey, here's how we're going to do this, and. Um, and maybe there are going to be bad ideas, but, you know, if I'm in a brainstorm session, then it's not about good or bad. Um, but what we do have is probably a technique for surfacing the good ones. Um, and so if you feel like someone is going off, so here's a tip. If you feel like someone is starting to, to really go far out from where you want to be, what you can always do, I love this line, is like, hey, let's just pause for a second. Um, I can see where you're going is really valuable, but we're all short on time, and I really want to honor everyone's time. So can we bring it back to this? Um, but what I will do before a meeting is I will set up that expectation that I'm going to do that in the first place and to not take it personally because I will say, hey, we only have an hour. We have a lot to cover. What I will do if I feel like we're getting off topic is I'll bring us back. So I will ask us to pause and redirect. So please don't take it personally. It's just because I want us to be effective today and I want to honor everyone's time. So I think it's about what can I do in the beginning to set up safety for everyone and to make it easier for me to call out when we're getting into a zone that's inappropriate. I hope that helps. Cool, you guys. Well, I love the interaction today. This is really fun. Um, so I think that's it for tonight, but let me know if you guys have any other themes that you want me to explore. I'm thinking um, next Wednesday, we'll talk about one of my favorite communication tools for developing positive relationships. So it's my favorite Thing ever and it's so easy to do and it really helps it helps with your loved ones it helps with your co-workers it's a goodie so I think we'll do that next week um all right you guys thank you so much for coming and hey Lynn I saw you just joined but I hope you watch the recording but you're probably already a master at this anyway so all right you guys have a great night and I'll talk to you next week